Hey everyone, John Reed here, host of Learn to Stargaze here on YouTube. Just a quick video today because Viboni just sent me their new SV230 Zoom eyepiece, which I'm actually very thankful for. Because if you've been following along with this channel, we have an observatory now. And interestingly, the observatory did not come with any premium eyepieces, as it was primarily only used as a scientific observatory with a camera. Now, I've never owned any premium Zoom eyepieces, but of course, when I worked at the Burke Gaffney Observatory, we used the Telview Ethos series eyepieces, which are around $1,000 a piece. So I'm familiar with how a premium eyepiece should perform. This eyepiece currently has a retail price of $399 US dollars, so a little less than half of a Telview Ethos. And it looks like there are a few websites that have this on sale, some currently pricing it at $339, and Amazon currently pricing it at $359 with an additional 10% coupon. Based on the comments on the Cloudy Nights forum, this eyepiece is effectively a competitor to some other premium zoom eyepieces like this AMP zoom eyepiece, but at a much lower cost. Now, why would you want a zoom eyepiece at all? For me, I typically use my smaller Celestron zoom eyepiece on the moon and planets. I'd use the low magnification to find the object and then zoom in for a closer look. However, for deep sky objects, I typically switch to a more premium eyepiece for a more reliable view. But with this Viboni eyepiece, I think I'd use this for deep sky objects. And here's why. In theory, deep sky objects look best when you match the telescope's exit pupil, that's the width of the beam of light leaving the eyepiece, to your eye's pupil size. And since your eye's pupil size isn't constant and you might be changing telescope users, it helps to be able to adjust the telescope's exit pupil, which you can do by adjusting the magnification. In other words, say you're looking at the Orion Nebula or a galaxy like M81. You'd use the change in magnification, not to zoom in for a closer look, but to optimize the amount of detail your eyes are able to perceive in the target. If you'd like a very, very detailed review, including all the specifications of this eyepiece, check out this video by Bogdan Damien. I'll put a link in the description. I'm gonna attempt to be brief and talk about some of the features that matter to me. Let's talk about build quality for a second. First, just look at this. We have a very solid and relatively heavy eyepiece. The two inch adapter screws off like this, to reveal the 1.25 inch adapter tube within. One thing I found kind of annoying was that I had to remove the adapter to remove the lens cap covering the 1.25 inch diameter tube because I wanted to use the two inch adapter. I guess going forward, I could just leave this lens cap off. Now, if we run through the different focal lengths, there is a very satisfying click between every two units. This allows you to know what focal length you've selected by sound and feel. I generally stargaze without my glasses. And without my glasses, I use the eye cup extended. And that seemed to work great. And with my glasses, I just roll the rubber part down. And this seems to work just fine as well. Now, if you remove the eye cup altogether, I seem to have no issue attaching a NexYZ cell phone adapter. and I was able to get an image to appear on the phone at all focal lengths. And like most eyepieces, the tubes are also threaded so that you can attach filters. In this case, I've attached an ultra high contrast filter. Probably the most important specification for this particular zoom eyepiece is the field of view, which is 57 degrees at 20 millimeters all the way up to 72 degrees at eight millimeters. In other words, the view should be relatively immersive at any magnification. To summarize, I really like this eyepiece. There was some color fringing at higher magnifications on the moon using my C8, but I'm not sure if that was the eyepiece or the optical system. Other than that, the views were just great, as you would expect from a nice eyepiece. Now for doing public tours at our observatory, I think this may be the only eyepiece I use. Now it probably doesn't have the performance of a Telview, but for general use, especially by the public, I don't think that's gonna matter that much. When using the telescope at the observatory, the important thing to me is the simplicity. I won't have to switch eyepieces when moving between targets of different sizes, 
and when switching between different users, people will be able to adjust the magnification to get the view that's most comfortable for them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the SV230 Zoom eyepiece from Zviboni. Special thanks to Zviboni for sending this along. I'm sure it will get lots of use. Don't forget to subscribe to Learn to Stargaze to take your stargazing experience to the next level. And if you're already a fan of the channel, please consider becoming a member by hitting the join button below the video. And remember, the future is looking up.